All these issues provide opportunities for us to grow. If we humble ourselves, if we're willing to seek wisdom, to communicate and to talk, and then be very intentional and deliberate about, look, I want to get better, not just for me, but for you as well. If we're always going to run, you can run from the person you're with now, but I can guarantee you there's a higher probability that when you think the grass is green on the other side, as soon as you get over there, it may not be the same problems. It's going to be some different. Hello, and welcome to another amazing episode of TMC, where we are here to help you take your relationships from, from surviving, surviving to thriving. thriving. If this is your first time joining us, go ahead and subscribe. Click the like button and turn on your notifications so you'll be notified each time we upload a video. Today on TMC, we have our very special guest, Dwayne and Tanya Reed with Marriage Unfiltered. And I've been married 24 years, going on 25. We have four children, two boys, two girls. <laughs> One interesting fact is that we dated for about two months um, and, and then got married. And so by the grace of God, we're still here. Yeah. Uh, there's definitely been some ups and downs, but we're, we're definitely surviving as well as thriving. We've learned a lot. And one thing we try to do is kind of share some of our experiences to really empower other couples to be successful in marriage. New Duane in college. We both went to North Carolina A&T State University, Aggie Pride. And, you know, Duane is uh, four years younger than me. Well, it depends on what time of the year. Sometimes he's three years. <laughs> <laughs> but either way, I'm older than him. And I had actually been married and had a daughter who was four. When we got married, um, we became a blended family. But that's us in a nutshell. And we live in New Jersey. So thank you for having us. Wow, wow, wow. It is here, yeah. Yes, it is definitely a pleasure to have you all tonight. The way you said you guys got married after two months of dating. Let's talk a little bit about that. What was it that made you say, oh, I got to marry her right now? What right. was it? We we knew each other in college, was attracted to her, never really communicated that to her. Uh, she was dating someone. I was dating someone. Uh, years later, I actually was dating a, another woman from the university, got engaged, Got engaged twice. Got engaged the first time. Something didn't feel right. Called it off. Mm. But then I allowed the pastor, I allowed others to kind of influence me, right? Kind of kind of telling me, well, you know, this is the woman that God had made for you. And I'm like, eh, I hear what you're saying, but something on the inside of me wasn't really resonating. Yeah. And because I never really had an example, my mother was single. I was raised, raised by my grandmother and mother. I didn't know what marriage looked like. And I used to ask some married men, like, how do you know when it's the one? Mm -hmm. And they said, if you're asking that question, then it may not be the one. Mm -hmm. So after kind of going back and forth, I, I finally called my mom one day and said, I'm not happy. I just, something is missing. It was nothing wrong with the person. It was just something that was missing. Uh, I seem to be very apprehensive about getting married, even though everything looked good on paper. Yeah. So after that, I, I, you know, I remember one day having some revelation. I heard a minister, I don't know if it was on television or a church, say, write down some of the attributes and characteristics that you want within a person, right? Within a wife. And I did that. And, and so I had a clear idea of what I desired. And I told my mom one day, I said, mom, when I meet the one, I will know beyond a shadow of a doubt. It will not take me a long period of time to figure it out. And so years later, I was traveling to North Carolina to go to a wedding. Tanya just popped in my spirit and I was talking to my best friend. He said, yeah, she's back in Greensboro. She's on the radio show on the morning uh, radio program. And so I just called the radio uh, station and she wasn't there. I left a message, went to the, the wedding in Charlotte, which was about an hour and a half from Greensboro. And then I came back from Charlotte to Greensboro and I was supposed to go back to Philly on Sunday. And just something said, just stay. Just something was like, just don't go back yet. Yeah. So once I stayed, she called that evening. So, you know, if you want to stop by and I went over there and we talked for about nine hours. Uh -huh. And in the midst of that conversation, there was just something in me that was stuck. Mm. And so when I went back to Philly, I was still stuck. And so there was back and forth, back and forth. And that feeling was strong. And then once I proposed, I didn't have the fear, didn't have the anxiety. Yeah. Uh, I just knew. And it was a leap of faith. 
And God had given me a, a dream that I didn't fully understand at first. But then once I started putting the pieces together, I said, okay, this is the direction God is telling me to go. And like I say, 24 years later, I know I made the right decision. Yeah. She gets on my nerves sometimes. But I, made the right decision. <laughs> I had laryngitis. I was homesick. And, be, and it was just great because I was supposed to do the morning show. It was this was a Sunday. And so we had to report it like we went on six to ten. So we had to be there early. You know, you all produce your show. You have to get in and get it together. Yeah. And but for some reason that weekend, my voice left and I had like laryngitis. I knew that I wasn't going to be able to go on air. And so I had already knew that. But he had met Cameron, who was my child. She was four. She had turned four, you know, earlier that in September. And so um that was my excitement when we spoke was you never met Cameron because we were just friends. We were cool, yeah. but never like that. Like even him coming over was the first time I'd ever had a one-on-one -on -one interaction meeting with Dwayne, but he was cool. And he was in the um, acting industry. I was in the modeling industry and I was an agent when I had Cameron, I got on the agent side. And so um, I used to tell him about projects to help, you know, his career because he was interested in that, but it just, it was, a, it was so amazing because who knew, you know what I'm saying? It's like, God, why didn't you tell me earlier? I remember seeing him in Crosby, like <laughs> we could have wasted some time. Why did I have to go through this, that, but right. then Cameron wouldn't have been born, you know, just things that we went through in our lives, yeah. our experiences that comprise of who we are today. And so, you know, there's a reason for it, but it's in God's timing. And when the first best thing I always talk about this, that he ever told me uh, because we did get married so fast, but he always told me that he would love God more than me. Mm -hmm. I never had a man tell me that, yeah. you know, he was like, I just want you to know, I always love God more than you. And God is, keeps him in check. I'll just yeah. put it that way. Yeah. You know, if I'm not happy with something like God, you got to check him, get him right. You know, <laughs> and he's going to be accountable to God and God wants us to love each other and to have a marriage that's thriving and, you know, that doesn't mean we don't have those rough patches, but how do we sustain through them? How do we get through them? Yes, we definitely get on each other's nerves, but we keep it real. Like, you two, know? like two old people. So. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, you just have to let it roll, let it roll and keep going and, you know, love each other beyond all of that. So I, I want to go back to the beginning, those first few years, because we know year one, two, maybe three, four and five can be very rough coming together, two separate people, two becoming one. I, I want to ask you this question. What is something that you know now that you wish you would have known then before you got married? You, you know, I think having a, a better understanding mm. of what marriage was from a holistic perspective, right? Because often, you know, I grew up in a household with a, a mother and a grandma. I, mm. I didn't see a man in the household. I, I never met my father until I was in junior high, right? Okay? Uh, mother never bashed him. He used to always send something for birthday, Christmas, but I just didn't know him as a person. So contextually, I didn't know what a father was. And to be honest with you, I wasn't missing anything. I had love and I had family members next door, but it wasn't in my home. Like I would yeah. see my uncle and his wife, but that didn't register to me. So I think for me, there's this gap in knowledge and this gap in understanding yeah. um, that when you when you step into marriage, you have an idea, and sometimes that idea has been has been shaped by culture, yeah. by television, uh, mm -hmm. and often they show you the good. They don't show you the totality of marriage. They don't show you the ups and downs. And when they do show you the ups and downs, they show you people being promiscuous. You know, we're gonna get divorced and go do whatever. Mm -hmm. So I think that sometimes I won't say it cripples you, but it can definitely inhibit you from fully understanding that marriage is truly a journey right yeah. and and now later in life when i go back and think about those vows that's why it says to have and to hold for better or worse yeah right mm -hmm. in those vows there there's good and bad and my father-in-law said this when we got married he said you guys are flying high right now right you're <laughs> like on cloud nine but at a particular point in time you're gonna come down absolutely and i vividly and distinctively remember that but i didn't fully conceptualize it in the moment but as you get comfortable with each other, now you're married, I got her, we have kids, and you start hitting those rough patches, there was a part of me that pivoted to culture. Well, you can leave. Mm -hmm. We can get divorced. Because marriage ain't supposed to be like this, right? It's supposed to be good. So the the immaturity and the, the ignorance and just not having a full understanding 
I think impacted our marriage and it impacts some of how we interact with our spouse when things aren't going good. So for me, going back, if I had a better understanding, more knowledge, uh, and had other couples that could really pour into us or pour into me as mentors okay. and give me the full story. Don't just give me this, this beautiful package because the package, there's some cracks in there. I need to know about the cracks. Don't just yeah. sell me the bill of goods. Give me the full narrative. Yeah. I think that would have been very important. If I could go back and do it again, I would want more of that. I would say, I'm going to just speak to that person um, who has the child and goes into that blended family, right? <laughs> because I didn't know, like, it turns it turns into something beautiful. It was not beautiful at first. First of all, she had a mouth. <laughs> he took her to the store the day after we got married. And this woman said, um, my, what a beautiful daughter you have. And she looked at him and she said, that's not my daddy. <laughs> and so wow. that was day one of Four our marriage. That was day one. There were moments I didn't know what I was going to do because you feel, you know, you have to protect your child, right? He wasn't ever abusing her or anything like that. It's just, they had to gel, you mm -hmm. know, you have to get out of the way. You have mm -hmm. to get yourself out of the way and let the marriage evolve and appreciate the marriage. You know, like we're both strong headed. Mm -hmm. So I was used to being independent, a single mom, you know, I don't need you for this. I don't need you for that. That's what I would say is just knowing that number one, divorce is never an option. Mm. It's it's never an option to us. Um, my first marriage, I got married because we were already engaged. I got pregnant. My mom was like, oh, so you're getting married, huh? I was like, I guess so. <laughs> and we got married. I cried down the aisle. I told mm. my dad, well, if it doesn't work out, I can always get a divorce. They had divorced twice. They got remarried twice, but they got divorced twice. Yeah. And, you know, and it was generational. And so just being able to get out of the way, you know, you can't control everything and know that God's got you. Let God lead us and guide us. So I hope that makes sense. And could I add one piece to that? Because just, just listening and the one thing is learning that you have to give space to people to grow. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Right? Help us. Giving that space, right? Because you're, the thing that I've realized over the years is we're two different people, right? Two different backgrounds, two different upbringings, two different exposures, two different perspectives. Yeah. And just because you get married doesn't mean the two going to become one. It's, yeah. it's going to take some time to become mm -hmm. one. Mm -hmm. and, and, and just learning that, one thing God told me very profoundly was don't look at where she is, look at where she can go. Mm. And, and that's how God looks at us, right? He looks at the end, like he sees the potential that's in us. Yeah. He gives space to us to grow. And that's some knowledge I wish I would have had early on too, mm -hmm. because it'll prevent you from getting into the manipulation or getting mad because you're not getting your way or you keep doing this, you're getting on my nerves. Yeah, you may share that something's bothering you, but you can't force someone to do it and adapt and give you what you want in that moment because we're, we're habitual creatures. We have these yeah. habits, yeah. but giving space to people to grow in their time and their season can can minimize a lot of grief and unnecessary stress. I mean, I don't, I'm like, I don't even know which way I want to go. <laughs> right. But Tanya, when you said get out of the way and you you said that for a moment before you said we as women. And when you were talking, I immediately thought about us, us as women, because we sometimes we are in the way because we get an idea of how something is supposed to be. And once we get that idea, we're headstrong and pushing forward and there's no leeway to allow for that space that Dwayne is talking about. There's no leeway to allow, you talking about your daughter who you already had learning to jail with her yeah. stepfather, her father now. And she's like, that's not my daddy and all of these things. <laughs> and if you don't get out of the way and allow their relationship to organically happen, that can cause a lot of turmoil. And if you don't get out of the way with the idea of what you have, because if I think about myself, when we first got married, Cedric and I, you have a lot of ideas of what marriage is yeah. because of what we see on TV, right? Because of what we believed, because many of us did not grow up in a two-parent home. Cedric did, but I didn't. So you don't even have a, a picture of, you just have ideas of how it's supposed to go. But if you don't get out of the way and let God shape and mold you both, then it could be a whole lot of conflict. Early on in our marriage, we could identify some stressors after the fact. Mm but we couldn't conceptualize it when we were in it. 
Yeah. Right. Because okay, getting married, I lived in Philadelphia. Tanya lived in North Carolina. Back then I was a social worker. So I wasn't making a whole lot of money to take care of a wife and a daughter. Uh, Tanya got pregnant. Right. So after a year of being married, we had a son. During that period of time, her mom had a stroke. Then after that, my mom died in 2001. So my mom died right after she lived with us. And then our second child together was born in 2002, right? So we're going from all these moments yeah. of people passing away, just traumatic events. And I think it added stress to our marriage. And, you know, we got some bumps. And as I stated a few moments ago, in my immaturity, in my lack of knowledge, I would, well, you can leave. You know, I, I would, you can go, yeah. not meaning it, but treating my marriage as if it was a relationship, as if I was dating, because that's yeah. what we do. Yeah. You know, when you're dating, you got that get out of jail free card, right? Yeah. You <laughs> ain't no commitment <laughs> whatsoever. But treating my marriage like that, like I understood marriage, but it was, if I throw this out here, you're going to act right. After doing that over and over again, after a while, she kind of, okay, <laughs> okay, <laughs> enough is enough. It created a situation where it was just very conflictual. And I really believe that our marriage was dead, right? It was, you know, sleeping in different rooms, sleep upstairs, downstairs, not having really having conversations, arguing, you need to leave or you can leave, I can leave. And eventually it got to the point to where I didn't have any peace mm -hmm. and I really didn't know which way to go. And I contacted my spiritual mom and I was having a conversation. I said, I just don't have any peace. Mm -hmm. And she said, follow peace. Right. So when I leaned into God, God said, leave. Mm -hmm. Don't you leave and don't take anything with you. Mm -hmm. And he said, because if you start removing furniture, it's going to communicate to your kids that something is missing. That something mm -hmm. is gone. Leave everything as is. I went and got an apartment. I didn't have anything but the clothes on my back packed my bags. And I remember the first night in the apartment, I was sleeping on the floor and I just started crying. And, and then I got angry because I wanted to take a shower. I didn't have a shower curtain. Mm -hmm. And I said, I hate her. And I heard God say, don't say that. Got up, went to Walmart, went and bought pots, pans. All, I got a, a big house down the street, fully <laughs> furnished. And here I am yeah. in an apartment, sleeping on the floor yeah. with nothing. Mm -hmm. But it was during that time, that brokenness, God got my attention and God said, don't focus on what's going on, focus on where you want to go. Mm. And he led me to this website that was about marriage couples being restored. And he said, meditate on that. And then he said, do you love your family? I said, yes. Do you want your family? I said, yes. He said, trust me, leave her alone. Don't argue with her. Don't go back and forth. Uh, and I stuck to that. I went to counseling. I think Tiny went to counseling, but I learned to just take my hands off things. And God said, you're still married. So this ain't no get out of jail free car where you can start swerving either. Right? Mm -hmm. You ain't no single man. You still married. And first and foremost, remember your first commitment is to me. And I've always told, I love God more than I love her. So that kept me in check, kept me in line. And I just focused on God. I focused on my own development, identifying those parts of myself where I missed the mark. And I still don't have it all together. Right. Yeah. It's still a work in progress. But I took that time to focus on me and I took the time to say, you know what, God, I don't know if it's going to work, but I want her to be happy. Right. Mm -hmm. And I just left things alone. And at some particular point in time, there are a few incidents that happened. Like one day she left her purse in the car and uh, dropping off one of our children at daycare. Somebody stole the purse and she had to call me. I had to go over there and make sure the locks are chained. I'm, I'm knocking on the door of my own house. Like, you can let me in. I'm like, I'm, this is a trip. <laughs> then one day, her car was messed up, right? She called me. And I'm like, now, how is it that we're separated? And the person you keep having to call is me. God said, that's your wife. Go over and help her. Yeah. So it was a humbling experience to where I had to get out of the way. And I had to get out of my own way and reprogram myself. And I had to, unfortunately, learn from scratch. This is, these are challenges, but you can't have a testimony without a test. And I need to learn how to navigate this. But the only person I can control is me, right? And, and so once that reconciliation came, we started dating again. We, we fell in love again. And eventually we got back together. But I think for me, we had to go through that. 
because I think that there are times in your marriage on, on the other side of the storm. What I've learned is I think God will allow those stressors, stressors to expose those weak areas of your marriage and that it provides an opportunity for you to seek more knowledge, strengthen yourself with counseling or whatever that is. It took us a, a, a long, it took, it took a while to get here, but it taught us a lot. And now it allows us that if, if you're another couple going through, you know, if, if you're looking at getting divorced, the first question I would ask you, why are you getting divorced? Right? Are you running because you don't want to deal with the responsibility, not of your partner, but of yourself? Right. The only person I'm in control of is me. I always say you came out of your mother's womb by yourself. When you die, you can be by yourself. That's the only person you can deal with. Right. And so instead of always pointing, the first person you got to point to is self. So you work on you. You develop you. And then, as I mentioned earlier, I got to give space to her the same way she has to give space to me because we're in a marriage to having to hold for better or worse. Right. Yeah. All these issues provide opportunities for us to grow. If we humble ourselves, if we're willing to seek wisdom, to communicate and to talk and then be very intentional, deliberate about, look, I want to get better, not just for me, but for you as well. If we're always going to run, you can run from the person you're with now, but I can guarantee you there's a higher probability that when you think the grass is green on the other side, as soon as you get over there, it may not be the same problems. It's going to be some different problems. Mm. The, the running spirit going to jump on you again. So at some particular point in time, you got to stop running and say, let me dig in and, and, and do the work. Right. Yeah. Marriage is not easy. Marriage is work. And that's another part which I would have known years ago. Yeah. There's some work, sweat, blood, and tears that comes into this. But the space that God gives us to grow, we got to extend it to each other. And if God puts us together, let no man put us asunder. We can get through it, but we have to choose to go through it because we always have a choice. Wow, wow, wow. I mean, Dwayne, you said something that I think is very profound for the listeners to put a pen in and point. You said that the stressors of life, different things, people becoming sick, people dying, children being born, just the stresses of life exposed areas of weakness. And I think uh, most of the time we don't know that, you know, we don't know that that's what a relationship does in those stressing moments is going to show up the weakness, but the weakness showing up is not to embarrass someone or to end you is just to show you where you need some focus at. And then the other thing Absolutely. that you said was in your time of separation, you talked about both of you all doing some counseling and working on self. Yeah. You just, I mean, you just gave us a home run when you said the only person that you can control is you. Mm. So when God says you be who you're supposed to be and you work on who I've created you to be and bettering yourself, then you show up better in the relationship and the reconciliation can happen. I love that. I love that. And I'm so glad that you shared that with us and with the listeners, because some, I know that there's someone that's going to hear this podcast and they need to hear that you can't fix her she can't fix you each person has to focus on self within whatever I, wherever I lack Shantae I have to work on Shantae I have to focus on Shantae being better and then I show up better in the relationship for myself and for Cedric I love that yeah really really good I, I you just pretty much wrote a book here on TMC podcast yeah, so definitely, definitely, definitely excited about that. I want to do this. I want to shift to the Marriage Real Club. What inspired you to begin this journey and why? <laughs> so, baby. Yes. Yeah, so we got in Clubhouse. You know, it was just really a space. COVID was going on. People weren't out. And someone told me about Clubhouse. I think it was my daughter. And got on and uh, we got on and then it was like, this is a great space for us to come together with other couples. It's important to have other couples. It's about community. Yeah. And so many times mm -hmm. you feel isolated as a couple, you know, you don't want to talk about it. You, everyone projects perfection on social media, you know, with the help of filters and this and that, of course, <laughs> but um, you know, it's, that's why we call it the marriage real R E A L, you know, because we want to have those transparent conversations and just really tackling different topics and, you know, also having some fun, right. Cause they're, Joy is is required in marriage and yeah. having some good times and being able to laugh 
at yourselves, at yourself, like Dwayne said, dealing with self. <laughs> and so that's really how we how we launched it was just a, tr- a safe trans- place for couples to come together and have transparent conversations, uh, real relevant conversations that's respectful because we don't always agree. Other couples may say, well, I do this or I believe this and da 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 and we're like, oh, that doesn't work in the Reed household, you know, no. <laughs> but, but, you know, we respect what you all do if, if it's good for you. And so Create, creating that space where look, we just want to have real conversations because mm-hmm. yeah. I'm going to be real. I can't even get them in church sometimes, right? <laughs> because even in church, sometimes we get the pretty picture mm. and you have people that are in church sitting there holding hands and they divorce next week because people are yeah. projecting this yes. image. Mm. People are like, we don't want to be that. Like yeah. we, we're, we're jacked up like everybody else, right? Yeah. That's why we need a savior. That's why we need to be redeemed. That's why yeah. we need God, right? Yeah. But we're honest with ourselves. And if we're honest with, honest with ourselves, and if we're confident in our identities individually and collectively, I'm okay with sharing my stuff. Why? Because there's somebody else out there going through something. And if we can share one word, just yeah. share a perspective of how we made it through, that can save your marriage and save your life. Who are we to refrain from sharing that? So God is just using us to be right. real, to be honest, to be transparent, and to listen and learn with other couples because you don't know everything, right? right. So be it older couples or younger couples, they can give us some perspective. So just having that space where we're promoting marriage, yeah. where yeah. some people are promoting divorce, yeah. or some people are promoting don't even get married. Well, yeah. we're promoting marriage and we're advocating for marriage, but we're also trying to be real and realistic in the midst of it. You know, now we have Wes and Nisha Stringfellow, so they're coaches, but we let everybody know, like, we're not coaches. We are not coaches. We are real married folks having real conversations. And so we're not in here to coach you or to do this. We're just in here to tell you our story. Maybe you can get something out of that. And we want to hear your story and come and share. Two is the relationship part, right? Because we've made some valuable relationships even with, like I told you, the string fellows who we met them on their niche, Wes and Nisha, and we were able to uh, do the book with them, be a contributing author to that. They have a marriage getaway annually. Mm-hmm. We went this past year. That was the first time we really invested in our marriage. And we went to Chicago for this marriage getaway. It was our first time <laughs> seeing them in person, you know, because you see everybody's profile pictures uh-huh. and their voices on Clubhouse. But it was amazing. And it's like we've known each other for for years and we're we're committed we're both all committed to marriage and then also Jamila who you know she talked to you about us yeah. and she is amazing like there's yeah. some great wonderful people that you would have never had access to yeah. if we had not had a platform like Clubhouse and so absolutely because it's all about relationships Absolutely. And it's so true. So true. Um, we we are so excited, have been so excited to have this conversation with you all. You have given definitely some nuggets, some gems for the listeners and for us. We are so glad that we were able to connect with you all. And we want to give this time for you to tell the TMC listeners how they could connect with the two of you for some real marriage conversations. We do have a um a Gmail. It's the marriage real R-E-A-L at gmail.com. Uh, we also have a page on IG, the marriage real R-E-A-L. And um, you can always messenger us. And you know, even if you come on Clubhouse, the marriage real, and we're there Monday, uh, Monday nights at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And we do do a wives pop up periodically for the ladies. That's usually around lunch, but those are special. We do promote them, but those are the um, ways you can get in touch with us. On behalf of the TMC community, we want to thank you all both so very much for taking time out of your busy schedule and adding value to us all. Well, thank you for having us. So we hope that you enjoyed this episode today. And if you did, go ahead and subscribe. Click the like button and turn on your notifications so you'll be notified each time we upload a video. So we want to thank you for joining us today on TMC. Looking forward to hanging out with you again on next week as we continue to help you take your relationship from from surviving surviving to thriving. thriving. Bye. Bye. See you next week. week.